Okay, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Dr. Zaidi. Yep. Are you from Sarawak or? I'm a Sarawakian. Previously, uh, I was a lecturer at the University of Malaya. And oh. I'm called back uh, to lead this agency. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, digital Sarawak. Yeah. yeah. Sarawak okay. is very beautiful. Yeah, I understand uh, Sarawak has got this uh, research council, yeah? Yeah, research council. That one, uh, <clears throat> their focus areas are on this uh, mm -hmm. fundamental, fundamental and also are not uh, really goes into digital. But uh -huh. we in, in SMK also, we have uh, this uh, research and development for digital technology. Oh, so they okay. are more into this uh, biotechnology, um, or any kind of research that not related to this uh, digital technology. So digital, you have uh, another institute? Uh, we have uh, another uh, vehicle. Uh, it's a G, uh, GLC. GLC? Yeah, previously uh, the research and development uh, uh, is under us, under SMA, and, and we have uh, uh, given that task to our um, Sarawak development, uh, the Sarawak Digital uh, Economy Corporation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you have the equivalent of MDEC? Ah uh, yes, yeah. MDEC. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Shall we start? Yeah. Yep. Yep, Miss Dina. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Zaidi, for making yeah. time for us for this interview. Let me just do a short introduction about this uh, uh initiative. The smart city in Southeast Asia are one of the rise as it delivers a real quality of life improvement. From an independent research conducted in 2018, it shows that smart city in Southeast Asia created 1.2 million to 1.5 million new jobs, saved 6 million to 8 million man years in commuting time, and a total of USD 9 billion to USD 16 billion savings on cost of living. Currently, there are significant increase in smart city initiative among the local governments in Malaysia, especially in Selangor, Penang, Sarawak, Johor, Pera, and Malacca, to be in line with the 12th Malaysia Plan 2021 to 2025, which focus on economic empowerment, environmental sustainability, and social re and engineering. My and co-publisher, Confex Hub, are collaborating to produce the Malaysia Smart City Outlook 2021 to 2022 to review the status of Malaysia's Smart City Initiative and development. This publication especially looks at the technology element forming the basics of Smart City, analyzing the Malaysian city competitiveness against global achievements and deliberating on the relevant technology issues. It also examines the current smart city technology adoption rates implementing the smart city framework. Most, more significantly, the Malaysia Smart City Outlook 2021 to 2022 will define opportunity for growth and recommend advancement smart city solution for adoption. Now to continue the interview, I would Pass it to Prof. Ahmad Ibrahim and Ms. Dina. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Anisha. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Anisha. Yeah. <clears throat> we are working on this book, as Anisha mentioned, to produce the outlook. It's mainly to look at uh, the progress that we have made in relation to the smart city framework. And uh, I thought the interview today, we would like to hear from Dr. Zaidi because you are. Uh, in charge of the Sarawak uh, Smart City or Digitalization Initiative. We just want to know what is happening in Sarawak, is there, what is the progress, 
Uh, how do you plan to move ahead? And what are the challenges? So to ask the question, I'll pass to Dina to, to proceed with the question. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, Dr. Zaidi. Yep. Uh, good morning. First of all, I must congratulate you, uh, Sarawak, on this, uh, your 20th anniversary of the library, your Sarawak library, which is a very impressive yeah. <laughs> institution. Uh, I was involved in the write-up for the book, for the Sarawak. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, so uh, so I've, I've noticed a lot of um, technological advances that have been taken up by Sarawak in terms of uh, library development. Yeah, exactly. We are supporting them. Yeah. <laughs> we are supporting them in terms of this uh, platform, uh, digital platform, and also uh, other initiative like uh, Digital Community Center. It's uh, quite similar with uh, Pusat uh, Internet uh, Malaysia, uh, Malaysia, I think, a new name. <laughs> Not the Pusat Internet Center Malaysia anymore. Um, is a uh, kind of like uh, enhancement program or project to empower the community, especially yeah. in the rural areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a lot of that in through the interviews and all that, you know. Yeah. You were, you were really reaching out to, uh, you know, hard to reach places, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think your, your mm -hmm. chief minister is mm -hmm. a forward looking leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, visionary, so. we can call it. Uh, he's a visionary leader. Visionary. <laughs> yeah. So my first question would be: uh, What are the focus areas or priorities of Sarawak in terms of smart city initiatives? Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you uh, to Complex Hub and also this uh, Puan uh, Anisha Stecken. Uh, for inviting me for this interview, we have been uh, discussed and tried to get my slot uh, for this interview for quite some time. <laughs> right. um, let, let me explain the, uh, the, our journey here. All right. When we first started uh, to introduce a digital economy in 2017, a lot of uh, naysayer, okay, telling us this is not a way of moving ahead. Uh, but uh, we still carry on, even though we uh, less get the publication uh, publi uh, published in any of these um, mainstream or uh, even the local state uh, media but we uh, continue uh, with our efforts. The question on this uh, smart city, uh, we are doing, uh, we are holding this principle, a smart city is to create a new civilization. It's not just about uh, empowering people uh, with this uh, digital technology, all right? Uh, so our investment, not only in this uh, digital or assigning this uh, contractor or adopting any new technology, but of course, with a new technology, it can have this advantage uh, to implement this uh, smart city. All right. Our focus in this uh, smart city, all right, uh, way back in 2019, right, we have engaged um, one consultant, if I can name here, we have partnered with uh, Huawei, right, uh, Huawei with their research team and also uh, their uh, partner in Singapore, I couldn't remember the partner in Singapore, to conduct a thorough survey a detailed survey, what will be the initiative in a smart city? Focusing on these, uh, on uh, areas in Sarawak, particularly in Kuching. Of course, Kuching have this, uh, what we call is a, a green and also a, a brown area, right? Brown means that 
uh, a lot of uh, um, these uh, digital technology be being implemented. Uh, the green totally uh, is a new uh, area. So we have uh, done this uh, survey and also analysis, all right? And we also benchmark it with uh, other country, especially uh, Japan, China, Singapore, and Europe, uh, and US, all right? Um, but this initiative have to be tell you what uh, the, uh, with the needs of the people, all right? We cannot just get this initiative and then just try to try to deploy it or implement implement it in Kuching. And yet, uh, we hope that the people can adopt it. No. What we do, what we did, actually, we asked uh, the ground people what actually they, they, they want to have in this smart city. All right. Uh, I can list down these uh, by priority, actually. All right. Uh, we have um, agreed on this uh, 15 initiative. Of course, uh, as you know, Sarawak uh, previously uh, not uh, getting any focus uh, in this uh, digital infra because the investment is quite huge. But our uh, the right honorable chief minister uh, agreed to invest even though uh, digital infra or digital technology or telecommunication per se is under federal lease. We have a MA63, right? <laughs> so <laughs> the federal, <laughs> the, uh, the telecommunication is under federal, right? All this investment or the money or the budget should come from uh, this uh, government uh, at the federal level, right? But <clears throat> I can say that the first thing that we look is digital infra. We are also um, put up the second initiative, the data center and cloud platform, mm -hmm. right? There is no uh, client server anymore in this environment. It's all cloud, all right? It could be uh, anyway, uh, the server, uh, but the main focus is to implement the cloud so that the people can get access to any platform. We use a multi-channel, we use this uh, smartphone, we use a web platform, whatever platform that can reach our services. As I said that, digital infra is a most important thing. Without digital infra, mm. you cannot have a smart city. You cannot have a digital technology to, to be used by these people, right? And then what we can see after this uh, improvement of data center and cloud, <clears throat> So one of our provider here in Kuching have, uh, invested a lot uh, to expand this, uh, their data center and also to deploy or employ more people to have this uh, cloud services to make it ready for this developer, all right? And then um, another thing, uh, the third one is a smart city digital platform. Previously mm -hmm. and still uh, ongoing, uh, we have, I think we have the first state that deploy uh, Tali Hitman. Is Tali Hitman is this a platform where we can connect the citizen to the government, All right? Direct to the government. We have, uh, of course, last time we are just using the web platform, people can, can just uh, log in uh, or they can fill in the form, all right? We have a manual, but now we are into this uh, one touch service, right? So mm -hmm. the Taliban can 
directly communicate with our government agency and at our level we will see that which agency uh, responsible to uh, reply or to resolve the problem they're facing by the rakyat okay and then uh, of course a digital platform now equipped with uh, artificial intelligence all right uh, big data analysis uh, so we are developing that uh, with the our data center with our cloud all right and then uh, to create the platform we need people we need to em employ people all right we have to to um train sarawakian right and to get the trainer from uh trainers from overseas the trainers from kl right to tell them what you should do right what skill they needed in this initiative and then uh this uh, platform what we call in our project is a state integrated operation center right uh if not covid uh definitely we will, we had launched this sioc because of the covid and delay in our physical renovation of the premise uh, but we continue to develop the platform uh, hopefully uh, by quarter one or quarter two, early quarter two, uh, we will have our uh, Ya Ahmad Bahamad Kota Menteri to launch our SIOC. This uh, state uh, Sarawak Integrated Operation Center is more likely like uh, command center. Hmm. Command oh. center mean, all right, uh, we will collate all the information from the existing system that we have. We have more than 100 uh, e-government services. Mm. Right? And then you collate to this center. And then, of course, the operations, operational of these services uh, are done by the agency. But as a center, we can see that they are performance. Yeah. Right. Um, if I can, if I can come in there, doctor. Um, yeah. Obviously, you have a a, a very good uh, um, um, structure, uh, uh, yes. vision ahead, and and putting in place all these initiatives. But I would like to come in and ask, uh, you know, in terms of uh, engagement with the public com communities, because you mentioned that all these yeah. things. Uh, are done uh, on the basis of the needs of the communities. So that's yeah. why I imagine that because you have uh, thought about these things, so the engagement is much easier. So how, exactly. how, how can, you, can you can you run through how uh, the public engagement has been and how do you promote a smart city program? Okay. Um, to engage the public, of course, uh, there's uh, resistance, uh, but uh, before that, beforehand, we have uh, this uh, communication, uh, even though it's just a one-way communication do, for this uh, press release, uh, interview by this uh, state uh, news agency, uh, and also we have this, uh, what we call the Rindo Digital. Rindo is a fun digital, all right? Uh, the way that we reach people, uh, uh, to have uh, these uh, technology introductions and we also have a video right and before that uh, and, and after after this program and this program keep uh, continuing and uh, we engage our consultant all right we engage our consultant what we uh, did actually we divide them into a cluster. We have a business community. We have an NGO. We have a, like uh, a community leaders, uh, and we have this a citizen, uh, which also uh, we categorize that them as a student, as a working uh, adult, uh, uh, school children, and. We have done a lot of uh, engagement 
more than 100 uh, 1200 residents um mm -hmm. the statistic uh, mm -hmm. uh, that we have and then we have conducted more than 10 uh, focus group discussions mm -hmm. which uh, I, I just said that we have yeah. these uh, community leaders we have an ngo so we bring mm -hmm. them and then we discuss what actually uh, can benefit the society. What mm. actually can benefit the rakyat? So we have uh, uh, from there we do this analysis, and mm. of course uh, we have to do the benchmarking. We have to compare what actually they want with what have been done in mm. this uh, developed country. So, yeah. so we do this analysis and. Uh, from this analysis, we come up with 15 initiatives and rank it accordingly. So it yeah. sounds like very com comprehensive, mm. your outreach yeah. work, reaching out to yeah. community. But uh, would you like to comment on uh, digital literacy? You know, there will be, uh, because Sarawak is very diverse, there will be yeah. communities that are, you know, not up to uh, exactly. adapt adopting this technology. So what's your program on the digital literacy? Yeah. Are people very important in the implementation yeah. of uh, smart city projects? Yeah. Uh, for the digital literacy, we are not just introduce this uh, digital technology, digital initiative, but we are using our own tools. I meaning to say that our own project like we are the first state that uh, acquired this uh, digital wallet, right? No other state that acquired this digital wallet license. So mm -hmm. we are using this Rawa Pay to introduce this to the people. So they have to use it to increase the literacy of it. Of course, uh, we have the seminar, we have conducted more than 100,000 for a three years a seminar, a small, and then we have asked our um, YBs, YBs Adun, um, to have their own program with their people, right? Mm -hmm. And we have reached to, to the extent of a long busan where mm -hmm. you have to travel uh, almost three days to reach that area. And then we bring YAB chief minister to tell them about digital economy. Even though um, they are not what the people say that they are not too savvy about the digital, but we try to reach them. So we do this comparison with these local people in the urban areas, right? We say that even the Long Busang, the remote area, really interested in adopting the technology into the daily life. Mm. So what more people in the urban? So the people in the urban a bit, uh, I mean, will feel that why I'm not willing to adopt this technology whereby these remote people, remote mm. area, in the remote area can, can uh, I mean, interested in adopting yeah. this. So before so why YAB came, yeah. before YAB yeah. came to that place, of course, uh, I have um, deployed uh, almost uh, 20 of my staff uh, mm -hmm. to be there one week. And then we mm -hmm. introduced the smart farming, we introduced mm -hmm. this Srawapi, uh, uh, we introduced that they can assess the government service online and and of course uh, one of the thing before we uh, went there what we did we enhanced the connectivity even though we are using the visa i get the uh, funding uh, from uh, our chief minister purposely for that area and then we enhance the connectivity we are using this uh, fake wireless access uh, to extend to the community, if I'm not mistaken, 1,500 uh, people over there. 
and then they have around in a second 200 over houses and we're using this technology fake wireless uh access and then of course they're using these uh satellite yeah i actually i like the way you develop the initiatives mm. yeah because you're actually engaging the people yes. and yeah. uh, finding out what their problems are mm. After yeah. all, this whole smart city is about solving people's problems. Exactly. Problems exactly. Problems. Mm. So I see some state, they come from the top. These are initiatives I want, which is not mm. good. Mm. I think you have done the right thing. Mm. Can yeah. you tell a bit more about the, some of these initiatives that mm. you are starting? Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, when, when we engage uh, these people, uh, this Ryan, uh, one of the thing, of course, the employment, right? Uh -huh. Say that how to get into this uh, government service. So we introduce them this e recruitment, whereby everybody can have a fair access to these evaluations, mm -hmm. all right? And then, of course, uh, how to have the safe environment, all right? So from this safe environment, how to create a safe environment? Of course, less crimes, right? Mm -hmm. Safe environment mean clean environment. So we create the initiative. Now uh, we will have our open tender because people need to know how they can participate in the government project, right? So. Most of the project by uh, state now uh, open tender, mm -hmm. right? Okay, open tender, and we are developing our specification now. We will deploy more than eight hundred CCTV across Kuching areas. We have a Padawan, a bit uh, outskirts of Kuching. We have a Samarahan also a bit outskirts of Kuching. So we this initiative we continue to expand we will go to Cebu we will go to Miri we will go to Bintulu but all these will be connected to our state integrated operation center in this platform to create a smart city what we do we will uh, implement the artificial intelligence we will implement the face recognition we implement the crowd counting, trespassing analysis for each of these CCTV. So, mm -hmm. and in our platform, uh, now you can join other platform if you have your CCTV. So we allow this platform, all right, to be hooked by the public. If you have a CCTV at the backyard of your house, you can, assign the cctv to the platform because nobody will monitor your cctv even myself i have a uh, six cctvs in uh, at my house and I, I rare a uh, very seldom i see my cctv so if that cctv can join the platform and that platform equipped with this uh, tra uh, trespasser analysis mm -hmm. and immediately they will notify you if any of these CCTV capture or detect any trespassers. So this is a safe city, right? That the government extend the services, not like a government monitor the people. So the CCTV is more into uh, getting the safe environment and give to the people. So this how this initiative and of course, uh, I think we are the first uh, to promote the idea of a digital ID, right? Mm. We have launched Sarawak ID. So people ask me, what is Sarawak ID? Sarawak ID is to create this uh, one single ID for Sarawakian to access the government services, mm. right? And then this ID is verified. You cannot just simply put your name, IC number, blah, 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 and then you can use the system. No, we will mm. verify your ID, your registration with Jabatan Pendaftaran Negara. All right. Mm. 
So everybody have his genuine authenticated ID. Right? This is what we want, right? Uh, then we have uh, engagement previously and we still continue our engagement with a social media provider, social media platform. And we hope that with a national ID, all right, every citizen have a verified ID and authenticated ID so that we can eliminate or reduce the fake news, mm. the scam, uh, to create a more cybersecurity environment. This is what we want, mm. right? Yeah. So Dr. Zaidi, oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, may okay, I so just ask, uh, Dr. Zaidi, since the yeah. day you launched the Sarawak ID, right, how many percent of your Sarawak people have joined? Yeah, all right. Uh, Sarawak ID, of course, that's why I said, if you launch the uh, the initiative without uh, getting the people inv involvement, all right, mm -hmm. you yeah. will have the initiative it become initiative, all right. It just a, mm -hmm. a, a few thousand, a few hundred will register with your platform because you 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 are not contain their problems. You are try yeah. not try to solve the problems. And now Sarawak ID, all right. We have more than 800,000 of Sarawakian registers. Right? I can say that those who are using the digital platform right, have registered the Sarawak ID. We have only 2.8 minus the, it, uh, the elders, minus the baby, minus this, uh, those who uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't have this uh, phone, I think we can, we have reached uh, more than 90% of those using the technology. Okay, how we get them into this raw ID, all right? That's why I said that we use this initiative, all right? What they need. So we use a raw pay. Those who are using a raw pay, they must have a raw ID. And a raw pay giving incentive every time you buy things so everybody if i want to get last time we do a promotion every time you buy grocery uh, 50 ringgit uh, you will get one ringgit two ringgit cashback you can shake your sarawak pay and then get this uh, money back to you so people tend to use it when people tend to use it, of course, they have to be in a certain condition. They have to register Sarawak ID and then mm -hmm. they can use it, right? So this is how we want them to get. Like, for example, the e-recruitment, if they don't have a Sarawak ID, they can register their job applications. Yeah. Right? This is how we connect this platform. And when I joined State, one, the first thing I said in my administration, with my administration, there will be no silo system. Mm. So I we create a uh, first thing is digital ID platform. Right? That is a platform. We call it platform because it's not a system, because it's a platform for people to know, right, what they are applying for. That's why we create from day to day yeah. and continuously upgrade our Sarawak ID so that mm. later on, we easily we can, we, we can put more data analysis. Like for example, mm. okay, uh, what I have uh, paid, uh, what I have spent uh, in, in my ID itself. Mm. So, so it, is sounds, it, it sounds like uh, you've got you you put out a lot of uh, incentives and through understanding the people's needs you are you are able to get them on board so i'm just yeah. trying to look at in terms of uh, reaching out to just now we talked about rural and re and reaching out to smaller towns how do you is there a vast difference and yeah. how do you promote this adoption of technology in smaller towns uh, 
All right. Uh, for the smaller town, that's why I said that uh, we have um, done these uh, programs, even a smaller program. We establish our digital community center. Right. We put an uh, officer uh, at this uh, digital community center. Right. And uh, what we do, we partner with the existing commercial entity. Like Sarawak Pay, the first digital wallet that partner with this bank. We have this Bank Simpana National. They have the current initiative, they call it Agent Bank. So if I want to transfer my money, cash money, to a smaller area or a smaller town, all right, it, I will get that people, uh, that person to register Sarawak Pay and I just transfer 100 ringgit to him. And with using Sarawak Pay, because it's a cross platform, this guy will just go to the agent bank, all right, and transfer the money to the agent bank. The agent bank will withdraw the money and give 100 ringgit to him. Yeah. So this is how we get people to adopt the technology. We bring the, their needs and then we res we solve their needs. Mm. Yeah. So there's no no not much resistance, I mean the, in terms of challenges. Of course, how do you of course if you have you, you have somebody that solve your problem, you will not resist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so that's why uh, I agree with Prof, right? We have to know the problem mm. on the ground yeah. rather than, okay, I have a CCTV project, all right? We will mm. implement the CCTV project, right? Mm. Strategy places, even not even engage with responsible agency. All right. Like for example, in our rollout of CCTV, okay, what we did, we engage PDRM, we engage NGO, we engage council, right? So we engage a lot of people, right? Like PDRM, why we engage PDRM? Because we want to know whether there, there was a crime in that area or mm -hmm. number of crime and what the coverage we want to see, right? So the engagement with the people is the first thing you have to do to know the, the problems. If not, the Smart City Initiative is just a spending your money <laughs> on the digital technology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I agree completely. In fact, uh, this smart city is a journey actually because yeah. you are moving from one state to a different platform but uh, the success of smart city depends very much on the stakeholders mm. and one is of the key stakeholders is the people, people. Yeah. Is so that that's why so mm. through your engagement i think you you want to get the buy-in from the people the people yeah. must be convinced this is something good then they will buy in then your your project will succeed mm. yeah so this is, is a, I think, uh, which is lacking in some of the other initiatives in the country mm. yeah exactly prof that's why in my early speech or my early words uh, for this interview is we want to create a new civilization civilization yes, yes, yes. I like yeah. it. new civilization mean that uh, like last time, uh, when uh, before this industrial civilization, people do mm. manual, right? And now, with one touch, you can get any services, mm. right? Uh, using your smartphone. It's a new civilization. And I agree with Prof. Dina. The engagement with the people is the most important thing. I have a problem, then... Of course, I want to solve the problems, right? So how to solve the problem if the digital technology offer me the solution? Of course, without resistance, I'm willingly adopt this technology. 
Right. People reluctant yeah. to use digital wallet because they said it's not safe. Of course, a lot of um, naysayers said that is uh, it tried to hack. This. But we continuously engage with them. We give them benefit. All right. You are using, mm. you spending fifty ringgit. We give you one ringgit. Mm. Right. So Nobody. Will... Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Not, not just a like, question of introducing technology for the sake of introducing, but understanding, letting technology <laughs> work within the context of community needs. Yeah. Because uh, this is all about managing change. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, you are moving wow. from one yeah. to another is change. It's mm. not easy yeah. to change. Mm. So yeah. this requires what you have deployed and all the engagement, yeah. and all this uh, incentive. Exactly. Yeah, these are the mm. change yeah. Yeah. So, um, in terms of technology providers, yeah, technology yeah. providers, um, how do you get them to be involved in the Sarawak Smart City initiative? Yeah. Of course, uh, as I said, uh, we have to upskill our talent in Sarawak. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we have to import this skill, this talent. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing what AB Chief Minister said: any initiative you have to do it open tender, all right? Yeah. So there will be no dovetailing if you know what you want to get, mm. right? Mm. You know what your specification. You are not being biased to other technology, <laughs> all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we open tender, we open to our contractor, meaning to say that they have to partner with this digital provider, mm. right? But the first thing, of course, um, when, when YAB Chief Minister resumed the office, all right, first thing he said that we want to be a digital powerhouse. Yeah. What does digital powerhouse mean? We are not just providing the technology. Digital powerhouse means as a point of reference from other states. We are the first one using this uh, wristband with a QR code. Right for the pandemic, right? I said to my officer, we have to think and deploy as fast as we can because the pandemic is about contact tracing, right? Yeah. And keep people safe, keep confine the people. How to confine the people? We cannot just deploy policemen in the kampung and by using this wristband. We do this promotional. We do this engagement with the stakeholder, mentor, uh, community leaders. That whoever wear the wristband uh, bring the risk to your family. So they have to report. Everybody have to report. Now, right? So the digital powerhouse it it, it, it did not mean only to be a Technology provider, mm. getting the provider from overseas and then become this provider or reseller. Digital powerhouse means we have talent. How to create talent? So the project in Sarawak, right? We have this, what we call unit pendaftaran contracted and jury rending, UPKJ. Uh -huh. Right, consultant, contractor, um, uh, uh, licensing, just like uh, e kewangan and so on, but only open to Sarawakian. So we open the project with the, to these people, but these people have to do or to bid the tender with their own people. So. Any of these tender or works from SMA or any other agency, uh, because SMA is an authority, we tell them, right, they have to engage our own people. We have five universities in Sarawak, and how to offer this employment if we are not strict in this project or create the, the economy, uh, uh, make the pie bigger to our people, right? We're not just become smaller, smaller. We have to create more 
larger mm-hmm. or bigger pie to them. So with the investment made by state government, pledged by YAB chief minister, what we did, we get them to employ or get our own Sarawakian with a talent. If there's no talent, we have this program. Like SMA also providing data analysis uh, to our graduates, right? Those who are graduate, they want to have this uh, upskilling. We have the program with a uh, partner with a uh, local university. And then we also have a digital innovation hub whereby all the startup, we gather them, we offer them this center, we offer them the trainers also, the mentor also, so, so that yeah. they will get um uh this uh assistant support mm. even though the trainers from kl even though the trainers from the overseas mm. right but they need the training so we are using our digital innovation hub we, uh, currently we have five and we will construct uh, i mean three under construction mm. right for each division main division for the rural area we have a digital community center yeah. this is a hub and spoke, hub and yeah. spoke for each division mm-hmm. they have to support this dcc of course the money from us all right mm-hmm. the the program we vet the program yeah, yeah. Right? that was but the next we, thing i was yeah. yeah that was the next thing i was going to ask you about funding you know yeah. um State funding. How? What's the the ratio, and how how do you get the funding? You know, the ratio between state funding and private. You know, and then you have in terms of encouraging people to invest in technology. Of course, as a state, uh, if uh, government not spending, there will be no economy improvement. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> As an authority and the, uh, as an agency that responsible for a digital implementation, of course, in in any state budget, we have to fight for the state, mm-hmm. fight for the budget. You have to, I mean, as a government agency, we have to push, right? Yeah. How we can want to get more budget for our digital technology? So we engage other agencies mm. right yeah yeah engage other agency what will be their digital implementation like for example uh, we have the i hydro mm. i hydro mean we have a telemetry more than if not mistaken now 400 telemetry mm. across rawa all right mm. so one of the thing of course they need this funding so we put the funding right we get their alloc- uh, funding and then reside in sma it's how we monitor this and managing this the digital technology so of course when you have money people will listen to you i think prof uh prof uh Ahmad know about <laughs> this, uh, government structure if you are not holding any budget people would not see you yeah so mm-hmm. you have to hold this money and then they will listen you, to you and what technology you want to use so we are the provider for them uh, we are not just uh, dictate them but we want to know what the needs of this agency like for example mm-hmm. i hydro or flood monitoring and so on all right mm-hmm. and then every year we're facing the same problem all right okay so when you have a budget examination, right? So we ha- you have to defend it. <laughs> it's not just it's not the YAB. YAB just give us okay uh, uh, five billion to implement. No, uh, at, at our level we have to work to get the budget. Of course, uh, the uh, in uh, in this coming RMK Doblas twelve MP plan. 
after Malaysian plan, we have to bid for the project, right? So we put more than hundred over projects that solve the people problems, mm. not just creating bangunan, buat bangunan, uh, but we are tend to giving the solution to the people. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I like your program mm. on building talent. Mm. Yeah. This is very important because mm. uh, at the end of the day, we don't want to be dependent on external source, mm. not only to bring in the technology, but to manage the technology, to maintain the technology, to improve the technology. So one of the key elements of uh, really sustaining smart city is yeah. to have the tech. Yeah. So you you are going the right way, I think. Yeah. Uh, so. exactly. I just want to explain more on our this uh, talent, uh, Prof. Uh, Miss mm -hmm. Dina and also Anisha. Yeah. Um, in in our initiative, we have partner all our local institution, mm. right, to create this talent. So we get the problem from them, and then we mm. match the need of the industry. Yeah. All right, but yeah. of course, we also partner with overseas, with uh, Semenanjung, we partner with Muslim Malaya, we partner yeah. with NUS, we partner with Huawei, Keysight, Nokia, yeah. uh, and other provider. So, if they have the technology, then they can yeah. introduce to us. All right, mm -hmm. we are the first one to, to get to know the technology, and we create this what we call is open lab concept. Open mm -hmm. lab concept is open to our partners. All right, if they want to use it, then they want. They want to have uh, the testing, then we have these facilities. We providing the platform, even the server. All right, there's an open concept uh, cloud for them to get the, all the libraries, development libraries in this server, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we are the first one to have a 5G innovation center, right? Mm -hmm. We secure oh. the uh, AA mm -hmm. spectrum, apparatus assignment spectrum for the 5G and we partner with Maxis and we have one center whereby all these uh, postgraduate, if they want to have uh, research on the 5G, they can come over and test uh, their application or use cases in this lab. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What about tourism? Because okay. Karawa is very big yeah. in tourism. Yeah. Is the uh, digitalization also happening there? Yeah. Uh, we have to have a uh, the platform prof, uh, Ms. Dina. Yeah. And we also want to have the real experience, all right? Mm -hmm. As you know, people cannot cannot live without the connectivity. So one mm -hmm. of the thing is we fund, we funded the, this uh, digital connectivity to almost all major uh, tourism attractions. We have mm -hmm. a Mulu, we have uh, this uh, Bako, uh, Semango. So first thing is to create is this uh, digital connectivity. Uh -huh. And along the way, we are uh, developing, actually already launched, already in place, what we call a travel apps. Mm. Mm. So travel apps. And then we also deploy virtual reality and 3D in that mm. app, mm. right? Like yeah. people from overseas, they want to know, I mean, not just a photo, but they want to know and they want to feel what will be this place, right? I want yeah. to see the 3D of this place, the 3D of this mm. city and say how, right? it's not just a video. All right, and then with a virtual reality, all right, they can go inside. Uh, like for example, we have a Fort Margareta here. All right, mm -hmm. they can go inside and see what yeah. is inside. All right, of course, 
people say that uh, why you need to have uh, this uh, digital platform for tourism, all right? Because we need them to come over here. Yeah, yeah. I think right. that's very useful now with COVID now and people can't travel. Exactly. What, <laughs> what we want to do, what we are doing, of course, they want, we want them to come over here and spend money, all right? Mm. But what we want to have in our digital platform is to entice them to yeah. come yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, the glimpse of the feeling so that they can yeah. come and visit again. Exactly. Yeah, true. Yeah. But, but for this, right, Dr. Zaidi, do you yeah. have a unique business model to collaborate? Because it can't be like always, uh, I mean, the federal, I mean, uh, the state sponsoring and funding all the time. Is of that course. a unique collaboration with your partners or stakeholders? Uh, of course. Um, we have created a form SDEC, right? Sarawak Digital Economic Corporation. They are responsible to get more funding from federal, all right? Uh, before before that, uh, we are the one that responsible. Uh, we engage with MDEC, we engage with a Mampu, we engage with other federal agency that yeah. they have a coverage in Sarawak, right? Yeah. Uh, to, of course, to get more funding, all right? The way we do this uh, partnership, of course, is a win-win situation. Mm. We cannot just pay them and then after certain years, they just run away. Like what a pro, uh, I must say, all right? We spend, 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 and then suddenly they run away. We are know where to go, all right? So the first thing is in any of our project, in any of our establishment or engagement or partnership, the key thing that I will ask is a transfer of the technology. How you want to train our people, how you want to have our talent to support you, not you support us as agency, as implementer, how you support our talent and that talent support you back in giving the services to us. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. That's very so, good. <laughs> maybe, uh, to round it up, so what yeah. is Sarawak's vision on... Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, as I said, a new civilization. Yeah. As I said, digital powerhouse. Our mm. vision, Ms. Dina, Prof, uh, Panusha, we want to be a greater state in Sarawak. We want to be a point of reference for any technology from Malaysia. We want them to come over to Sarawak. And of course, to create this environment, environment of the technology that Sarawak government providing the platform providing the heaven for these people to create a digital powerhouse. This is our vision. Mm -hmm. With this talent, right, if I may, we want to create a more high-income job in Sarawak so that the people that migrate to KL will come over to Sarawak and create the environment of technology, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a vast land area right people with more money coming in with their fdi or ldi local fdi coming to sarawak and spend and bring the, the development to the people of sarawak this is our vision not my vision <laughs> but in Dr. Zaidi, sarawak itself is, has got so many natural uh, attractions and rich cultural heritage. So, yes. is it competing with technology in in terms of uh, you know in All terms right. of promoting promoting okay. tourism? I think if we want to nature. discuss, if we want to discuss a specific topic. We can discuss about one hour to hour, but. To, for me to cover all our initiative in one hour, <laughs> one or half an hour, it's not fair for yeah. me. We right. have a lot of initiatives. Uh, okay. Okay. In line with a digital technology, the first thing that we have in our mind is 
how to preserve this mm. culture in yeah. the digital world. So yeah. we have okay. a smart yeah. heritage, right? Mm. So we mm. have a smart heritage. Mm. So this a smart heritage program, all right? Mm. We partner with the agency, we partner with tourism, all right? Mm. Uh, we empower people to come up with this, uh, what we call the application, the content, all right? So a lot of people, even uh, a young kids, okay, create this um, instruction, virtual reality, mm. uh, the 3D, how uh, to do silat. Mm. Right? Mm. To do silat. Oh, so, yeah. so this is how we want to preserve mm. our heritage. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. we want to bring back the mm. culture back, like for example, the kuih kuih lama. All right, people mm. not even know, myself not even know that they're existing, and mm. then bring the program to our smart mm. heritage, and yeah. and even at our ground floor, mm. we call them is a creative heritage innovation center. We have mm -hmm. a chick C H I C, <laughs> not a chick. <laughs> right, we create the center for them. Yeah. So of course the COVID now we have yeah. less program. Yeah. All right. Previously we have almost every day people come in uh, to share what they have in their mind mm -hmm. and how to preserve this heritage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds very okay. interesting. Yeah. 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 Please come over yeah. here. <laughs> <From. laughs> yeah. Only be there once. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to go again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Anisha, so. right, come mm -hmm. over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Is there anything you would like to add on to any of your comments? Yeah. Um, what uh, my uh, aspirations in a smart city, all right? Let other state or other cities in Malaysia, mm. all right, think about their people, all right. Mm. In Ching, we have a certain needs, all right. Mm. In Ipoh, they have a certain needs. Not yeah. not every <laughs> city have same need like us. So right. when you want to engage any smart city initiative or deploy any technology, engage with the people. Yeah. Bring the people come in and adopt the technology, and of course they will sustain. They themselves will sustain this technology, and of course, if you are the agency that responsible, first you engage with them at their age of twenty or thirty years old, and after ten years they become a boss, one of the bosses in any agency. And then they see the digital technology, of course, they will support us. So this is how we want to create this ecosystem. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, right. Dr. Zaidi, for your right. time. And your initiative really inspiring for us and other states. It will be. Yeah. And yeah. keep doing what you're doing. It's, yeah. it's a very good achievement for smart city, to, going toward a very digitalization smart city. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything that you okay. want to have uh, in future, you have a set Thank you. Uh, specific topic, and then I can give uh, this uh, lecture. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Truly, a lecture background. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much. Thank Dr. you. Zaidi. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Stay safe. Very stay cool. safe. Stay vigilant. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye